Okay, I've got 1.30 and we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order if, if everybody is okay with that. Give everybody a second to get ready. Yes. As y'all know, we, we have a very full agenda today and so we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this. Um, I would like to go officially call this meeting to order. Um, first order of business is to welcome our uh, new commissioner, Mr. Dan Doss. Mr. Doss was appointed in last night's city council meeting. Dan currently owns the Fairview Inn and Suites and is also affiliated with local company that owns various national franchised restaurants. We wanna welcome, welcome you, Mr. Doss. Thank you. We'd also like to uh, officially welcome Beth Smith as our new administrative assistant representative. She was approved uh, for hire at our last meeting, if you were here. That's We're gonna go ahead and review the minutes from the last meeting. Hope all the members have had a chance to read those minutes. Are there any questions or changes? Move to adopt unless changes are noted. Second. Second, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. We'll jump right into the financials, review those first. Uh, please note, uh, as we go through these financials, we'll use this information to determine our allocation for funding in 2018. Uh, the first item that we have up is the review of funded and unfunded commitments for 2017. There's a sheet up here if anybody has a question on those or if they can't see it uh, or would like a copy. In 2017, we had officially approved $667,000 in applications. Of those, we have paid out 448,000 so far this year, and we still have 226,000 to pay out for the remainder of the year. If you'll go to the bottom, the current cash on hand is $360,000. Our projected revenue for the remaining three months is 171,000. We're using a a uh, rough estimate of about $57,000 a month in revenue. That's kind of the average from last year uh, to calculate our, out our remaining estimated revenue for 2017. So that'd give us a total cash position of about 530,000. Then if you take away the unfunded commitments of 226,000, it gives us an estimated year end cash balance of $304,000. Typically, our goal is to keep somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 to 300,000 cash on hand at all times because right after the first of the year, a lot of these organizations uh, need the funding for their projects. And so we wanna use that cash balance to, to fund those as needed and keep that balance in the account. Are there any questions on that part of the financials? Okay. If you go into uh, the five-year trend, As you'll see, 2016, we ended with $691,000 in tax revenue for the 12 months. So far through 2017, we brought in $508,000 for the first nine months. And then based on the same projection of $57,000 a month, that'll bring us 171,000 for the remaining three months. And that would be a projected revenue for 2017 of right at $679,000, right at $680,000. As you can see, that's gonna be down roughly about 10,000 from 2016. I think a lot of this was, we had some baseball tournaments that got rained out in the spring was a major part of that. And then also September, we were down about six or $7,000. And I think that was probably primarily due to the first home game not happening with uh, Miami as expected. So. Anyway, roughly about $680,000 is our projected revenue for 2017. So if we wanna look at setting our target for 2018, I would make the recommendation to set a rough target of allocating for projects of $700,000. Uh, my reasoning is uh, we're gonna carry a little more than anticipated over. Our goal again is around 250. We're gonna be carrying about $300,000 cash over. Then also we have um, two new hotels that are gonna be coming on, hopefully by this uh, end of this year that should help the revenues also. 
and so that along that's the Holiday Inn Express and the new one at Hilltop. So I would recommend a target for 2018 allocations of about $700,000. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have to make an official motion on that. I think we can just use that as our benchmark if everybody agrees. And then once we go through all the applications, then we can um, make that official recommendation along with the recommendations of all the funding. Are there any questions or discussions or thoughts on the $700,000 target? I, I think the 700 makes sense. We have to start somewhere and that, that leaves us a good cushion that we need. Okay. It's in line with the past. Yep. Yeah. I think that is in line with the past. Well, if there's no other questions on the financials, I would uh, request a motion to approve the financials. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Okay. We're going to get right into the application process. First off, um, I just want to thank each one of y'all for your service to the different community events and organizations. I mean, this is the lifeblood of Jonesboro sitting in this room. Uh, every one of you volunteer for these organizations and give a lot of time and, and heart into these, and we just want to thank you for that. Um, we also want to thank you for helping us revamp the application process. Uh, as most of you are aware, are aware the A&P Commission is governed by legislation on the state and local level, so many other cities around Arkansas are using the same criteria for funding these events. Uh, over the past several months, if you've been to some of the past meetings, uh, we visited with many of the other cities and borrowed their ideas, processes, and application packets to form them and to fit our goals in Jonesboro. Uh, we approved a new set of procedures and applications uh, that you all received. Uh, we appreciate your understanding working through this first year on this these new packets. Um, a couple of things, if you receive funding, it's important that we follow, the following items are followed by your organization. Uh, first, and this is in all the application packets, uh, first is a follow-up report. We request that these be turned in within 60 days of your event. Uh, the follow-up report, follow report will provide us, we need to be provided the receipts, proper use of our logo, detail of expenses, and a, um, summary of your event with the number of people and teams that showed up. Uh, we expect it to follow closely with the application and use of funds expressed in the application. Just to note, if it's not received and if it's not substantially followed as presented, we may not fund your organization next year or we may elect to fund after the event only when receipts are provided. That's something that most cities do now. We do have a little flexibility with that here. Uh, we want to continue to have flexibility with that, uh, but going forward, it's important that we get the follow-up reports with due proper notification with receipts and follow-up information. You know, our goal, as stated in the statute, is to promote tourism in the city and to produce a positive economic impact on the businesses of the city of Jonesboro through the funding of promotion and advertising of events held in the city. You know, our barometer is an increase in hotel revenue and subsequent increase in the hotel tax revenue. If it doesn't show an increase year over year, then we have to look at where, what we're doing and making sure we're making proper decisions up here. So, you know, as we go through the year, we're gonna be looking and making sure that our hotel tax revenue is increasing based on the decisions that we're making. The new packets contain a significant amount of new information that is needed for us to make good decisions based on quantifiable data. As you saw in the email that was sent out, we're not gonna ask for complete sales presentations uh, from each organization. Our plan is to start with the new request, then go to into the larger request, then followed by existing request. If we do not ask you questions, please note that this doesn't mean we're not considering you for funding. It probably means you did an excellent job of providing us with the information in the packet or we are familiar with your organization. We're gonna do this to <clears throat> really try to streamline the, streamline the process. Um, each commissioner up here, this is the packets that we received. This is significant amount of information that you all provided. It was very helpful. Uh, each commissioner 
went through and spent the last several days studying it. So I promise you, we've looked through these. We understand what your organization is trying to do, and, and we understand um, what you're requesting the money for. If not, we will ask those questions. Uh, I guess I'm just trying to summarize that, you know, we're not going to need a long sales pitch from everybody to sell their project. Um, we've worked really hard to get the information on the front end so we don't have to do that. Uh, also, we've got 30 of these, and so uh, being respectful of everybody's time and the other organizations, as we go through the questions, we're going to have to go through them really quick. Uh, if we have a question, we'll ask you, but uh, if we don't, that doesn't mean we're not funding your project. So, As we go through, our plan is to uh, pencil in our recommendation as we go down through these. We've got the list up there. We'll pencil in the recommendations. We are not going to total those up until the very end because we really don't think it's fair to start at the top, pencil in numbers, and at the, towards the bottom, if you're at the bottom and we're out of funds, then you don't get funds. That's obviously not a fair way to do it. We're going to go through here, pencil them in. Once we get through there, uh, we'll run the total and then see how close we are to the $700,000 mark. And then at that point, we'll either um, provide additional funding or have to cut some places. So. Uh, it will not be official until we get all the way through every organization. Again, we do have very limited time. We're going to ask for short presentations or short questions uh, as needed. Uh, we will table some events, I'm sure, as in the past. I think it's important to note, unless we allocate those funds on events that we're tabling, that doesn't mean that we'll be able to provide that money in the future if those are tabled. Um, it basically will mean that we're not going to be able to fund it unless we end up having additional money in the future as we see how the revenue comes in. Our goal also in talking to the other A&P organizations around the state, you know, it's important for us to, on these projects that we funded year over year to make sure we start trying to be self-sustaining. That's an important note. I know watching the video from last year's meeting here, it was something that was brought up consistently. It's something that we've talked about over the last three or four meetings. You know, our goal, we've got to start getting some of these organizations to be self-sustaining, raising enough of their own funds where they're not dedicated or not required to need funds from A&P every year. If we're not providing allocations to new organizations and new projects, we're not going to grow the hotel revenue. And so that's something we'll be preaching over and over as we go through these events. Um, you know, I know in looking at the last meetings last year, you know, I think some of the administration and some of the commissioners took a lot of heat for cutting some organizations that had received a lot of money over the years. You know, again, uh, they were just doing their job, and it's important for us, all of us, to remember that we've got to get these organizations self-sustaining, and we're going to start the clock now to really work on that over the next year or two. Also, if, if you received funds before and did not provide a uh, request in this cycle, we probably will not look at any additional requests from uh, pre organizations that have received money in the past. Uh, going forward this next year, if there's a new event that comes up, uh, something that wasn't thought about during this application process, we will uh, probably consider it, but it's going to be on a very limited basis. Uh, because we really just don't think it's fair to us for us to consider new requests after the deadline after everybody else has requested money on in proper timeline. So I guess are there any questions before we get into the process of going through the applications for any of the commissioners? Okay. I appreciate y'all letting me go through my rant. I just want to make some several things very clear before we got into it and um, Make sure everybody's familiar with, with the process we're going to go through. Okay. I think there was one or two that said they needed to come and uh, discuss early and come and go. Um, again, if you're at the top, it doesn't mean you're going to get funding. If you're at the bottom, it doesn't mean you're not going to get funding. So uh, the first one, uh, I think, is Brad here with Discs Out of Heaven. Brad, do you want to come up real quick? I think we're familiar with your organization, what we did last year. 
uh, I guess just real quick summarize how many people showed up last year um, and how the event went. Okay. So we can talk about that. Sure. Last year we had 143 people come to town. Of that 143, they came from 26 different states and from two foreign countries. Uh, they started arriving about a week and a half before the actual tournament. And as the tournament got closer and closer, more and more people showed up. And they stayed, again, the tournament was a four-day tournament, so they were here from Wednesday all the way through Sunday, some all the way through Monday. Uh, the tournament itself was a huge success. Uh, we had, again, each of the tournament sites, which there are nine sites this past year, they go through an evaluation form. Our tournament, Jonesboro, was ranked 4.6 out of 5 from the players as they enjoyed it. They enjoyed the city. They enjoyed the tournament. They enjoyed everything that we had to offer. The course itself was ranked 4.8 out of 5, which means as it stands right now, it's the highest rated course on the entire tour. Uh, we have been, because of those big numbers and because everybody had a good time, they are coming back in 2018. That's, that's a huge feather in our cap, guys. It really is. Uh, they've added the cities of San Francisco, California, and Detroit, Michigan to the Disc Golf Pro Tour, and Jonesboro is still a part of that in 2018. Let me, let me ask you real quick, not to cut you off, but no. tell us how many people are you expecting to come in for the 2018 tournament? I expect it to be much bigger because this past year we were on Easter weekend. I think it really killed us. Okay. I think this year we'll have anywhere from 250 to 300 people come in and play uh, both the amateur side and the professional side. And how long? How many days are they typically here? Uh, the tournament itself this year will be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And again, some of them will start showing up the week before for practice. So anywhere from 10 days to a minimum of four days. Okay. This past year, or the request that you've requested is 15750 Last year, I know it was kind of an odd deal. You came in mid-year, mid and we were able to provide you 5000 in, in the middle of the cycle uh, because it's basically all we had allocated. Um, again, I, I guess I would just make a recommendation from the floor on what we think we could could do and just start from there. And unless anybody has any other questions of Brad. We gave him 5,000 last year? Yes, sir. What about 10,000? I, I was going to recommend 7,500. Okay. okay. So official recommendation, 7,500 to 10,000? Yeah, um, I, mean, I, I think 10,000 is deserved. I mean, okay. after the end of last year, I had to grieve Mr. Hurd on the 10,000. Okay. Well, we'll pencil that in as a recommendation only right now. That doesn't mean once we get the final numbers, it might go to zero, it might go to 15, but uh, okay. that's kind of our recommendation. I know you've got to go. We will report back to you and, and let you know our, our final numbers after we get through everything. Sounds great. And thank you so much for letting me go. I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Is everybody okay with that process and think it's fair about the way? Okay. I just want to make sure before we get all the way through. Um, Pat Qualls, Treble Clef. It's Pat. Okay. 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 We'll start at the uh, top of the list then. Um, again, just for y'all's information, we do, each commissioner has a sheet um, with all of them numbered, with the requests, um, what was granted previous years for that company, or that organization um, and our notes on it. So we've got quite a bit of this information that we've already researched. So we're going to go right into uh, the first one on the list, uh, Christian Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. If y'all want to come up real quick. And uh, this is a new one. We are going to have time to show it. It's, um, you know, I did. I have met with them once or twice, just providing them information on the application process. They also sent out a video ahead of time talking about the um, the process. Basically, y'all are working t to make Jonesboro one of your regional site selections for annual conventions. These are held all over the nation, and y'all go to different areas, and you're trying to get Jonesboro on that rotation, correct? That's right. We've been wanting to come here for years, but the limited number of hotels has not allowed us to bring as many as we need to bring for an annual convention. But with these new hotels being built, we're getting really close. We're really trying to explore what we can do at the convocation center and with the hotel years. Okay. And your request is for $10,000, and you're just asking for the money to rent the 
convocation center. That's correct. Correct. And then estimated number of outside vis visitors is 2,000 plus over a two to three day period. Is that correct? That's right. We expect a total of 3,000 here, 800 from the 50 mile radius and about 2,200 from outside that radius. Okay. They would be using hotels Thursday through Saturday night. Let me ask you, I know we've talked about the hotel situation. If we're able to fund the full $10,000, do you think that they'll make Jonesboro on the selection site based on the hotels that we've got committed to help work with y'all? Again, that's a part of the process. We're, we're really looking at the city of Jonesboro. We're almost there with the facility. We surely need your funding. We need a little more cooperation from the hotels, but we're really, really close. Okay. And we like long-term relationships, we'd like to come here for years. So we're looking for a five or six year commitment. Okay. Um, I think uh, based on what we're trying to accomplish and what the, the goals of A&P, I mean, I think this fits right in with exactly what we're trying to do. I would make a recommendation of $10,000 and that's contingent obviously upon y'all making Jonesboro your site selection and also, you know, working with the hotels and, um, Obviously, we've got some hotel owners on the uh, commission, and we'll be glad to try to help you with that. So We appreciate your consideration very much. Thank you all. I do think uh, that recommendation at this point would just be a one-year commitment, see how it goes, and then obviously if it goes as planned, I think it would be something we'll continue to, to look at heavily. Thank you very much. So, yeah, are you all okay with that yeah. recommendation? Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to... Uh, put my two cents in, but I have talked to them several times, and so I'm not going to. You're going to make, you're gonna have to make some of the recommendations here. Um, okay. Jonesboro Jets, a new request that we have there. Okay. Miss Ditta? And this is the swim team, not the bus line. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to, I'll let you ask the questions. I'll let y'all ask the questions of this one. Do you want to just, this is an established organization. You're looking for funding to help with the swim meets to bring those in and, and continue help funding those, correct? How many swim meets are y'all looking at? I know there were some questions in the packet. Um, next summer, we have two meets. We, we were able last weekend to get voted to have the conference finals again, which is a little bit bigger meet than we've normally had, so we expect a lot more kids, um, people coming from everywhere in our conference, which is Batesville, um, Mountain Home, Paragold, Pocahontas. Um, but we encourage people to come and spend Friday night. We try to offer an event Friday night. Uh, the host team usually does that. Um, so we would try to do something to encourage people to come and spend that Friday night, and then they would be here all day Saturday, and the other meet would be all day Saturday. Is this non-local attendance, is that 350 participants per event, or is that for the three events? No, that would be per event. Yeah, I, I believe, um, you know, the, the other meet will probably be a little bit higher than the original meet, and it just depends on um, what weekend it falls. Estimating roughly about 100 hotel night hotel rooms. That's what I'm thinking. Um, you know, last year it was in Batesville, and they had a big turnout for that Friday night. Um, you know, the hotel rooms were booked up. So that's what that's what we're hoping. Um, our representative at the meeting really, really pushed it that we would offer something really enticing that Friday night. So that's what we're hoping. And we also offer events that Friday night, so people come in and swim, and they don't want to drive back home and then have to get back up Saturday morning and be here. Okay. There's a $5,000 ask on this. I would recommend that we try to go ahead and fund the entire amount. Okay. I agree with that. I agree. Yeah. Side note, uh, how many meets do y'all travel out of Jonesboro for on an average, if you had to guess, your team? Um, during the winter, it's probably two to three a month. Um, and that's like October, November, December, January, February, uh, one or two in March. And then in the summers, we are usually gone every weekend um, to different meets. So, and hopefully this year we would like to try to, our next year, host some meets in the winter at ASU if we're able to. Can you get us an aquatic center? I'm okay. working on it. Okay. I would like to. Okay. 
Uh, any other questions from Jets? We've got a recommendation of 5,000 there. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Next one is uh, Arkansas Hoops. We've got... Um, Mr. Mason, Nick, okay. Tell us um, ab about the event, estimated number of people that you'll bring in. Uh, it's an event that's uh, been put on before in other cities, uh, in, in Bentonville and then in other states too. And being from here um, and with, you know, having connections with Nike and Marcus Monk and some of the other people uh, in the basketball scene, I was like, hey, let's put it in uh, – in Jonesboro because I can remember growing up whenever there were the big tournaments here and they used to bring in all the top players. So basically that's what we're trying to get back to uh, because families have now started using AAU events as family vacations. Um, and so now you get the vacation, you get the events, you're getting a lot more people um, coming into, uh, into town. And we've had it to where there's been anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 people um, coming into the area, coming into town. Everybody's staying in hotels. We uh, we manipulate the schedule to where we're playing people early on, on a Friday and then late on a Sunday. So then you're having to stay those extra days in the hotel rooms. We've had uh, tournaments where we've had 600 stays. We've had 800 stays. Um, basically, it, it just depends on how much funding and the funding dictates how many people that you can get in here because it's all about getting premier players and uh and if you can get those players then uh you can get as many people as you want really i guess you know it is the biggest question is just the request is for one hundred thirty thousand dollars, and obviously we've got limited amount of funds here um it, it looks in here like you're requesting pretty much funding to to fund pretty much the majority of the expenses on the event. What about, will you have some income coming in off of this that can yes. help offset some of the expenses? Or? Yeah, um, there will be income, and this will also be an event that after three years, uh, we won't need any of the city's money, and we'll still be able to produce at the same rate that we're producing at with the city's money. So if we come in and we have 750 stays, or if we have 500 stays, and that continues to trend up after three years when we're not taking any more money, that does not just drop off. That stays right there, and, and it continues to build. We also have a four-year commitment from Nike um, to to donate and continue to raise their money um, based upon the product and based upon what the city does. We have a four-year commitment from Gatorade. Uh, we have a four-year commitment from Malik Monk um, as well. And we're also working now with a couple of other NBA players uh, to get their, their specific EYBL teams in here and get commitments from them to donate to the event as well. You mentioned Mittenville? Yes. Had a term at Mittenville? Term. Yes, yes. We've had uh, multiple ones in Bentonville. Uh, we've done ones in Jonesboro before. The last one we had, uh, the last two we had in Jonesboro, uh, the first one we had, we had about 3,500 people um, in one day. Now, that was a special occasion because we did have Malik Monk coming back home. Um, but that's what it's all about, finding those type of guys, finding the next Malik Monk, finding guys that are going to the NBA that everybody knows about. And now with YouTube and the internet and stuff, uh, people and fans keep up with that type of stuff and they travel to see to see all of these kids uh, play. But we've had success basically everywhere, everywhere that we've gone. And we're putting it early enough to where if something happens, if there is a storm or, I mean, it's hard to rent out basketball, but if there's a storm or anything like that in the contracts that we send out to the teams and what we tell them is, hey, this event has to go on. So a second date will be put in this. And if you, if you sign up for this event, be ready if something happens, if Mother Nature intervenes. It's not just a wash or you lose your money or we got to wait until next year. Um, the chance is, now, of course, if we put it on another day and both dates are messed up then at that point, but the chances of that happening, you know, I think God probably just didn't want us to have the event. Um, when did you have this in Jonesboro? You, you mentioned you had it. Yeah, I've, uh, we have it every year after the Barry Pruitt Classic. So last year, uh, 
it was the second weekend in December when we had uh, Park View and um, Jonesboro playing. And now the difference, though, is these are multiple groups combining to make an AAU event because the high school events are a lot easier, a lot different. You can just do them by yourself. With this, this is multiple groups and multiple companies combining as one because I don't know how familiar you guys are, but there's an EYBL circuit where all the top teams in the country, 15, 16, and 17s, all come to certain sites. Nike makes it mandatory in, in every single one of their contracts that you have to bring your team to all these certain sites. So what we're trying to create here is to make it to where we are a Nike site or we are a stop. Because then at that point, it doesn't matter if, you know, like I said, if you give a dollar, it doesn't matter because Nike makes it mandatory. If you are a Nike team, you have to come to Jonesboro. You have to come to Little Rock or you have to come to Las Vegas. And so that's where you really want to get to because then whenever that star is on the map, people will follow behind and they'll basically be coming in asking you if they can do events for free, just trying to be around that Nike logo. Um, because once it becomes a stop, it's, you know, it's very easy to throw tournaments around the different day that the Nike stop is. I think we, I gave. We, I think we gave the organization twelve thousand dollars in sixteen. Does that sound right? Yes. Yes. I, I, I think we understand what we're trying to accomplish here. It's just the dollar amount with our limited funds of one hundred thirty thousand. As you can see, most of the events, you know, we're giving five, ten, fifteen thousand. I think it's going to be one of those deals where we have to try to figure out how to either get a, a major sponsor to help upfront the money and then offset it with the ticket sales and us help with the advertising of the event and maybe some of the uh, uh, other items for it. I guess it's just a matter of it's just a matter of the dollar amount that we're able to come up with here. Right. And this is also a three year commitment. So I didn't know how to put that in the in the budget. It's not one hundred and thirty thousand a year. OK. Yeah, I, did, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, It's scaled over that. Uh, more at the front of it, then it goes down and down and down because with, with other cities that we've experimented with and which, you know, you can do it the way you want to do it, but that's how it should work for, for, for people requesting. It should be more Will and then we be the only down. one in Arkansas? Huh? Yeah. Will we be the only one in Arkansas? The only AAU event? Yes. No, there's three of them. There's, there's another big one in, uh, in Little Rock, um, and then there's another one at Bentonville. But you'll be the only one that has girls and boys. Nobody does girls uh, as well. And I don't know if, if any of you have seen girls, but girls travel, I mean, well, because you're not going to send your little girl anywhere. So girls really travel. So let me ask you the first year, what what's your needed amount for year one? 50000 Okay. Um, how much of that is advertising versus... Uh, how, how much in ticket sales would you bring in the first year? Do you think? Uh, if we got fifty thousand, uh, anywhere from twenty-five thousand to fifty or sixty thousand, okay. uh, and then you know, and then with other sponsors, I don't think I don't think it's going to be that hard to get other sponsorships as well. Uh, I have a really good relationship with ESPN, um, and we just like. We have a bunch of relationships that, because the cost of the event is going to be more than what we put on on right. that sheet, and we have a bunch of different relationships where other people are going to contribute, and then and we'll pull out of our own pocket too for other things and other events that we do across the state and in other states as well. Okay, Nick, where are y'all right now in the planning process? I mean, obviously AAU calendar's got to be set so teams know, like they map out their schedule. Right. This event in May, where are y'all right now as far as? Um, so I've told them that I'm going to get it done. Uh, so we're we're moving forward right now as if we're going to have the event because just like you said, you can't really wait until. I mean, you can't wait any time. Uh, Nike just signed with us on giving us an EYBL team, one of the teams that I was telling you about with the stop. So we have a four-year uh, commitment with them. Um, so we're putting that all together now. Um, and at the same time, putting together the Jonesboro event like we're going to have it. Because it's a lot easier to say, never mind, than it is to just try to dig it up. OK. And as it's a time, we're going to have to make a recommendation here. I recommend we uh, table this because it's seven months out. And we'll have to look at it at the end of our uh, total. OK. 
Okay. Let's just table it for right now, and we'll either try to come back and visit it at the end of this meeting or in the next meeting, possibly. Does that is that what your your thoughts are, Bill? Yes. Okay. Is that, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Coleman organization, they were on their way from Little Rock and I think they took a wrong turn and ended up close to Memphis, so they're on their way here. What's that? Okay. okay. So are they here to present? Okay, we'll just uh, put that to the side for right now. Uh, Joey Perry, Martial Arts, Arkansas Open, requesting $12,000. Mr. Perry? Also, we did, uh, add some additional follow-up information in the packets. So. Tell us real quick about your uh, event and how many people you expect to come in. I know. Absolutely. The Arkansas Open is an event that I uh, created independently 20 years ago. And we invite, we started with inviting uh, just local competitors and teams and studios. And over that period of time, as, as we've grown and I've grown, uh, it continues to do that. And, and at this point last year, it was the largest open martial arts event in the state of Arkansas that was open. And we drew competitors from 14 different states. Uh, we had 300 paying competitors. We had 150 that were complimentary based on different fundraising events that were done outside of, of myself and outside of the state for an event that did not have to go through our system. Uh, last year was our first year to be rated as a regional event. So now we are part of an 11 event regional circuit that covers the entire Midwest and Southeast. Uh, we will be the keynote event in Arkansas, of course, the only event in Arkansas that is rated at that level, uh, and it continues to grow. How many participants and how many nights will they stay typically? This year, officially, competition will be two nights. It will be Friday and Saturday. We will run a uh, free anti-bully campaign and anti-bully training uh, seminars for the local children here in Jonesboro, uh, not just my particular students, but it'll be open to the public that we'll be doing on Thursday night and Friday evening. Uh, Friday night late and Saturday will be the primary competition. And uh, we're utilizing the ASU Convocation Center this year for the first time. How many participants will be signed? This year we're expecting 400 competitors on that side. We're expecting an additional 100 on the grappling and jiu-jitsu side, uh, which has not been uh, formally rated. Uh, last year was the first year that we used our electronic scoring system, uh, so we're still getting used to that, but it's grown to the point where we're, where we're at that level. So roughly 500 people coming Roughly 500 competitors. Uh, last year we drew 1,100 people into the building, and uh, this year we're expecting a little more based on the increase in comp competition. So around 1,500 people in attendance is what we're expecting. Okay. Um, any questions or recommendation? I'd recommend we pencil in 5,000. Okay. Would that help you? Sir? Will that 5,000, would that help you get closer to bringing in more people on the event? I anything would help with bringing in more people. I'm, I'm, I'm humbly here. Okay. Thank you. We'll pencil that in and uh, try to make that recommendation. Yes, sir. I appreciate your time. Okay. Uh, Western Events Rodeo. Okay. We didn't know if y'all had somebody coming. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. And yes, ma'am. I'm Bill Fitzgerald. This is my wife, Jill. Okay. Uh, we're with the NEA Pro Rodeo um, and Western Events. Um, this will be our third year, 2018, to do this rodeo. It was part of the Northeast Arkansas District Fair for many years. Um, a few years ago, um, the fair had um, taken a back seat to the rodeo and wasn't going to be able to do it. Um, so we came in and wanted to keep the tradition of rodeo alive here in Jonesboro. And so we, um, we've taken it over and trying to build it. Uh, this past year, for 2017, we moved the dates from the third weekend in uh, September to um, the second weekend in August um, because of dates uh, available at the Convocation Center. And we've already booked it again for that uh, August 10th and 11th of 2018 at the Convocation Center. 
Um, we felt like that that's a better date. There's more contestants available. Um, it, this year, retraining the general public here in, in Jonesboro, the number of, uh, of the date, because everybody's been used to it being on the third weekend in September for many, many years. Um, we, were, um, we were very pleased with our attendance. Our contestant numbers were up. We had 160 contestants um, from across the United States. They're all professional rodeo athletes, um, so they come in from all over the country. Um, so we were, we were really tickled to, to be able to have that number with the date change. We had um, a little over 4,000 uh, 4, spectators in the Convocation Center. Uh, over the two nights, and I think that number will continue to rise as we retrain the general public of the new dates of the rodeo um, and um, just getting the advertising out, getting more contestants will uh, start finding out the new dates uh, as well and start coming okay. in that, that this as a major stop on their um, calendar. Okay, so you're requesting $5,000 mainly for additional marketing expense. Just marketing expense to help retrain the, the general public and to and also to market to the contestants is the date so that they'll come. Okay. Where, where's the venue? It's at uh, Convocation Center. Okay. okay. I guess ask for a recommendation. Well, let me ask one question. For, um, as far as the advertising, do y'all advertise in rodeo magazines or I mean like what sort of advertising do you uh, do? well we advertise in the pro rodeo sports news which goes to all um, PRCA contestants as well as for the local advertising here we use all the radio groups the uh, KAIT um, and some printed materials as well okay. it'd be great if this advertising if you if we do find some money that it could be used to bring outside people yes, sir. into Jonesboro. Yes, sir. We, and we can do that. We can put an ad in, the, like, say, in the Pro Rodeo Sports News, which every contestant in the PRCA gets that um, that publication. Okay. I guess need a recommendation from the floor or from the committee? Five thousand penciled in, but I, mean, I haven't been to the rodeo, but I've, I've driven by the convocation center when you know it's been going on in the parking lot. It seems pretty busy. Um, I don't know I if by a shake of the head. My primary it, question would be how many people are actually staying in hotels as opposed to their trailers, because I know a lot of rodeo. Right, I, I understand that, and, and, and you know. I, I can't, I really don't have a way of tracking the contestants staying in the hotels. We can do a survey when they check in, but not all the contestants have to check in with the secretary at the rodeo because of um, their, their paying with their account because of being a professional organization. Everything is done computerized. Um, we can do, you know, like I say, we can do some kind of uh, tracking or try to get them as they come in and check in. Are you che are you staying in your trailer? Are you staying in a hotel? How, how many nights will you be here? Um, our you know our biggest thing that we can say is they are eating, they are buying, uh, going to the grocery, going to fast food restaurants. They're doing that kind of stuff. They're going to the local hardware stores or tractor supply or somewhere and buying. And I'm, that that doesn't help you as much. But it, it is putting a tax base back into Jonesboro. Okay. Can we get 2,500? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, okay. Make a recommendation of 2,500. Is everybody okay with that? I'll pencil it in. Does that help y'all a little yes, bit? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Trey Stafford said you cut you a really good deal on advertising. So. <laughs> he does a great job for us. Yeah. What did you say? Trey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Okay. Uh, um, 
we've got a lot of the city events. Why don't we jump to the Red Wolves Foundation first, and then that way we can put all the city events. Do you want to go back to Susan Coleman? Or yep. Susan or, Coleman? Um, Coleman Foundation, ladies, are y'all here? Yeah, y'all come on up. I know y'all have probably been driving about 80 miles an hour, so. Yeah. Now just to, uh, we wanted you all to think that we were very professional. Real quick, um, we've gone through the packet. Um, we've we've gone through what we're doing is going through making recommendations. Uh, it, it, I know y'all set a record for the event this year for a first time event. I know a lot of people attended. It was hugely successful. I, I think everybody's very familiar with it. I guess the question is, how many people do y'all expect to come here this year? And how many will be here for overnight stays, that sort of thing? Well, th that is a little hard to predict. When we began our race in Little Rock, um, we started with 2,200, and we doubled every year for um, about eight years. Mm -hmm. Now, to say that we're going to have 8,000 people at our race next year, I'm just not willing to go out on that limb. We have predicted a growth of up to 5,000, which is still a considerable growth. Do most of those people come in and spend the night beforehand, or, or half of those, do you think, or what, what would be your I idea? I would know from the numbers that we, we submitted in here, it looks like um, we do pull from around the state, mm -hmm. um, and we pull certainly from outside Jonesboro. I'm going to find those for me. About 2,000 from out of town and 5,000 right. from NEA. Is the, uh -huh. And about 1,100 hotel rooms is what was hotel room nights. Okay. And we can tell you that the hotels were booked and were booked early because we got lots of phone calls in town, but, but we weren't tracking any of that. Right. How many people did you have uh, attend this, this last year altogether? 4,062. Okay. And, and we initially budgeted for 1,500. Right. So, um, so we had to quickly rework those numbers. Okay. Uh, I mean, now that's actual participants. It doesn't include the all the people who were there for security and for right. uh, preparing foods and volunteers. And we hope all those volunteers registered, but they may not have. <laughs> I think y'all, your request is for forty six thousand dollars. Obviously, this being a new event, it's new money going out for us, and we obviously think it's a great event. You know, you hadn't been here, but for the other ones, but what we're trying to do is in you know five ten. $15,000 range, I guess my recommendation would be to try to start out at 20000 um, to try to meet somewhere in the middle to help with the advertising, and just to pencil that in at first. I mean, that's kind of my first. We knew we asked for the moon, but we were sort of told that might be the approach we ought to take. Well, would, you take would you take 10 then? <laughs> no. No. Like a lawyer. Um, I, w I would recommend starting at 20 yeah. Matt, you okay. okay, thank you. Thank if y'all want to stick around towards the end, we'll try to finalize that. I think it's the process. Thank, thank you. you very much. Deal from Trey as well? Yes. Yes. We're gonna jump um, we're gonna skip over the parks real quick and jump into Red Wolves Foundation. Mr. What number is that? Um, and we had a previous three-year commitment that expired this year, and the request is for another three-year commitment of 100000 a year over three years, correct, specifically for the North End Zone project. Okay. And additional events as well. Right. I think we put in the package. I brought Jason Martin. I'm Terry Mahajer for new members. Uh, Arkansas State Athletics Director. Jason Martin's our Associate AD for Athletics. And I think um, Matt had a question last time I came up here about some of the logos we used and some of the confusion, some of the dialogue we've had with some of the previous board members. I wanted to make sure that that was clear. And we do need to address that to make sure everybody's clear what that means, what we're trying to do, how we're promoting events to come to Jonesboro. Obviously, we're trying to attract everybody from across the street, to across the country and, and, and the region to come to our games. Um, as you know, the more games we play on ESPN, the production staff alone is in the 50s to 100s, and uh, so we're going to continue to try to promote Jonesboro. So, 
Any, any questions? The, um, how many games do you plan on having, football games in Jonesboro, every year on the – As of now, six. Okay. And – we would like to stay six, if all possible. And you're reading in, in reading through here, you're getting pressure to try to move some of those to possible. Yeah, we, we're off. getting a lot of questions. Uh, as a matter of fact, with the War Memorial Commission now being under Parks and Recs in the state of uh, Arkansas, um, and also with them trying to attract local businessmen and entrepreneurs on their board, they are trying to, they have had uh, several conversations with myself, our chancellor, our president of our, our system, Chuck Welsh about the possibility of moving games to Little Rock. Um, you know, is that plural or singular? Uh -huh. Game. Well, they would love to. Have, we'd love, they'd love for us to move all of our games. We're not going to do that. Uh, they need to fill a void. Obviously, um, we. And, you know, before I got here, we only had five games a year. We only had only th in 20 years. We only had three years where we had six games. We averaged five games. And since I've been here, we've averaged six games per year. So that having that extra six game is imperative, I think, for the community. And uh, so I think this could also be a part of that as well, of making sure that we keep those six home games in Jonesboro. Could we make that our commitment contingent upon six games? You guys can say whatever you want. <laughs> and, um, Absolutely. How many, um, well, I, mean, I think we saw the dip based on the, just the fluke with the Miami deal of what what that could cause. Um. Yeah, I think I think that was a great um, example. Could, the, could you also uh, contingent upon funding to su submit us a um, proposal to review of the use of our logo and sure. where you think and it might be we get together and give you some ideas too. Yeah, I th we'll, take, we'll take any ideas you guys have. I think, you know, it's, just as an example, some of the things that were discussed about putting logos on local board billboards internally, meaning in Jonesboro, I don't know if we necessarily need to do that. Um, but we're open to any ideas. You might have some ideas that you've seen it, uh, that other uh, commissions around the state have done, and we're, we're open to anything. That's why I brought, what's one of the reasons why Jason's here is to make sure that, that he executes <laughs> all those logos. Okay. And we're still doing it today. All of our graphics, our game day graphics, you see that your logo's on it. I don't know if you could pull, pull one up and let them see yeah, it so they to, know. And to jump on, I know we talked a little bit at the end of last year. Uh, one of the new uh, settings with Facebook uh, is that in order to put um, any kind of advertisement logo on it, um, there has to be a verified uh, business or Facebook account tied to that. Um, so once the AMP Commission can develop a Facebook account that is verified, we can tag that and we can use that on our Facebook account. Okay. I'll bring this up just to And that wasn't in there last time. Okay. And I think what we do is look more of the, uh, um, okay, yeah, yeah, I think we'd look more. At, Those go out, that's a national graphic. I mean, that's going out to all of our. Okay. Uh, I think it's clear, obviously, what ASU athletics, what, yeah. let me ask you real quick. The, the teams coming into play at all the sports, they primarily stay at the Jonesboro hotels. Is that correct? Not in football. Okay. What can we do to? help change that Get a, uh, bigger hotels okay and uh some of them we've had since i've been here probably three times they've stayed in jonesboro um and uh it's just it's about ballroom space okay. and um but you know the, the, if we build the hotels obviously there's gonna be more people that want to stay here and but now our other sports you know the basketballs mm -hmm. volleyballs baseball. track and field baseball mm -hmm. they're here in all of our, our camps and our, all the auxiliary camps that go along with our sports, they all stay here. And I, I guess that's dictated by the football teams coming in and their requirements. I guess my only yeah. request yeah, would mean, just be they you, practice in the they practice in the hotel and they walk through. Well, and some of the some of the better space hotel space here, they're already booked mm -hmm. in advance, yeah, so I, they I, can't I, stay here. So I mean, that'd be my other recommendation. So let's just, especially mm -hmm. the two new ones coming on, that we might try to. Look ahead and see if we can't get those to be local. If and it's obviously depending on the constraints of those teams. So. And that that goes along with also the airport. People flying directly in here. Yeah. yeah so gotcha. that's you know usually where they fly. In in the past they used to do walkthroughs at the stadiums. They don't do that anymore. So wherever they fly into, they're going right to the hotel and going to work. Gotcha. I understand. So, do you guys have any choice on as far as which teams you'll be playing or anything like that? Uh, as far as non-conference. Yeah, yes, well, the the home games. Yeah, we have we have choice on our non-conference games. 
but our conference games are dictated. It's usually so like last Saturday we played Coastal Carolina. Um, we'll go there next year. Okay. Now, we don't always have uh, choice on when the game is played. So we usually find that out in the end of February, 1st of March. So like the game tomorrow night, Thursday, ESPNU, national game, 60 million households. Right. They picked that game in last February. <laughs> okay. In the March. Cause I, I, we prefer Saturday games, obviously, but you know, because of our broadcast. That, that was my point. I think it, it, it helps if you if you if you have any choice on it to pick certain teams, you know, that, that brings the crowd to yes. our town. Yes. So. Well, I th you'll see over the next, and that's a, I think that's a phenomenal question because yeah. as you see the way that we dictate yeah. our games, we try to, we're trying to play teams that are regional based. Mm -hmm. and so now you're going to see teams like SMU, Tulsa, um, they're coming in town. Uh, now UNLV is coming. That's going to, that's a big brand. They're yeah. going to be here next year. Uh, we're also playing the teams that are regionally based, FCS like SEMO and some of those teams that will come here and stay. Yeah. And uh, so that's important. You know, the timing's also important. Like sometimes you guys have scheduled Memphis games. Yes, sir. And they get here, but then they yeah. leave, you know, right. at the same day. So if you have it in the later in the day, then they, they're forced to stay in our town. Unless we are told, we get, there's a 10-day window when we play. Mm -hmm. and ESPN has the right to pick our times 10 days in advance. But after the, on that ninth day, we set our own times. We generally want to play at 6 o'clock okay. during, during September and October. Right. Right. And in November, we'll play at 2 because of the weather, sometimes cooler. So if the sun yeah. is out, it's a little nicer for folks as opposed sure. to being at night. So our November and December games are at two and September and October. We did a little poll on our fans and that's what they prefer. So that's that's what I'm getting yes. at. If we can arrange something, you know, those afternoon games are, you know, further out, maybe that could bring this crowd here in town. You know? So you'll see this year our November games uh, are, will be two o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Recommendation from four. Uh, I'll recommend that we do the, the uh, 100,000, uh, but the three-year commitment is going to be based on six games every year. I love it. Okay. And and logo placement. You and won't have any argument yeah. for me, Bill. Okay. We'll probably review the logo placement every year. You just that's, submit it. That's very important. To us. I think it's you important, know. too. I, and I, yeah. but I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't – I think we all just kind of – sometimes you don't – when you're, you're using vocabulary, you don't know what – different marketing terms mean. So. Sure. Well, we, we appreciate all y'all do appreciate and, and appreciate what the issue does. Thank you. And I know you've got a game tomorrow night. You don't have to stick around unless you just absolutely want to. <laughs> See you there, right? Okay. Okay, that's... I like everybody having to see what I'm typing. Let me see how many times I have to back up. Okay, we're going to get into... Uh, the different Jonesboro organizations, uh, and I will say when I got on this commission, it, it, it is a learning process to try to determine which one of these, what the organizations, which are private organizations, which are city organizations, and which are com combinations. Uh, I, th I think the first one that we will um, look at is... Um, I'm trying to think the, the, the best way to do this. I, I think the, the best way is just for uh, possibly Wix and to give up and get, get, give us a summary of each one that we're trying to do, because I'll link them all in together. And these are some major projects that we've talked about in our previous planning meeting. So Wixon, will you get up and kind of give us a summary of the request from... Um, so you're just doing baseball and softball? We'll probably just... Tag team all of it. Um, yeah, the Danny's here talking about City Stars too. So, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, City Stars also. I think the first one. Um, do you have somebody that wants to talk specifically about softball? Yeah, I'll let Danny do it. Danny, do you want Danny to come up? You just stars. you just stay up and we'll do that. Danny, can you explain the request for softball? It's basically sixty thousand dollars for new backstops, and I had written in sixty five thousand, but it was actually sixty thousand. Um, what we're looking at, uh, and over the last few years, we've been updating. Uh, Southside Softball Complex. We've been redoing the fences, the backstops, the netting, uh, just the things that need to be done to keep the place safe. And this uh, last segment will finish up the youth side. We'll, we'll actually do all the fencing on the backstops and do a block wall at the backstops, which will bring, if, if you ever go out to a ball field where the fencing is low on the ground, balls hit it, it rolls up, 
This will eliminate that rolling up of the, of the fencing and makes it safer for the children that are playing. It gives it a solid surface on the backside, and a good <clears throat> clean surface for them to play. And this will finish all the youth in. And as you can tell, you know, we've got, I think we've got 31 events planned out there. And so we're really, you know, if you start looking at it over, over the big picture of how much we're asking for, it's really quite a bit smaller than what you've been hearing already today, so. Right, and, and I think one thing, we're gonna be looking at a, a turf project that's a partnership between Jonesboro Baseball, A&P, and the city of Jonesboro. What we also have done research on and tried to look at is, you know, all the projects in general throughout the whole city for all the park areas and not just uh, Joe Mack versus the softball. Wixon, will you give, because it's my understanding the city is in the process of budgeting some significant money out of the general fund to do projects at Southside, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So in my budget for 2018, um, I've submitted a, a new restroom and concession stand um, that's badly needed on the adult end, which we also play youth games down there. It's um, about 325 to $350,000. Uh, then also, um, <clears throat> the biggest thing they need out there is lights. Um, you know, we inherited this park five, six years ago now. Um, it was run by a organization for a long, long time. Uh, by a group of uh, dads and, and senior citizens. And, uh, so, but the price tag on that's $850,000. So um, that's what I've submitted uh, for my budget for that complex this year. So city funds that are going into Southside are well over a million dollars. Yes. Okay. And, and that'll get it up to speed to where we think yeah, our, that, our biggest complaint is the safety, safetyness of the for the girls um, out there and for the adults in in, in adult softball. Um, the lights are just not adequate. Uh, they're old telephone poles from City Water and Light. They're old, uh, actually oil switch uh, fuse boxes. Mm -hmm. So when they when they blow, City Water and Light has to come help me. Um, and so this will get it up to speed. Um, this will also help us. Uh, bring people that have not been coming our tournaments because of the safetyness back. Uh, that's been our biggest downfall in the last two years was they just, um, our tournaments are steady, but they can be bigger and we can get bigger teams in here, but they just won't come because of the safetyness of, of the lights and of the backstops. And does that include new lighting in the parking lot? Uh, no, we have safety lighting already. It's adequate enough. Um, okay. Uh, the last thing that we will have to do out there is our major parking lot does not have asphalt on it, and that's roughly about $450,000. So hopefully we can do that either in phases over the next few years or after we get all these major projects done, then put that in the budget. Okay. So if we approve the softball backstops, it's our understanding that the city will be looking at well over a million dollars Correct. for other improvements yes, at Southside. That's what I've submitted to the mayor and to city council, and so we'll know that you know later on. So. Joe's chair of finance, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm one vote. Okay. I'm okay with this. Okay, we're going to recommend 60000 for Southside. And let's just go ahead and go into City Stars real quick while we're here. Are you going to yes, present uh, that? That's the same. The request is for 50000 which is what we have funded in the past. How many different tournaments and organizations are encompassed we, in We City actually Stars? host about 28 events for City Stars. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, a lot of people think it's just the, the free sa basketball and free soccer, but it's not. It's actually, we host uh, basketball tournaments, we host uh, volleyball tournaments, both those bring people from out of town. Uh, we have, um, you know, as far as our leagues, we have travel soccer that brings teams here for friendlies, uh, tournaments. We're even looking at adding uh, events through the summer that are 3v3 tournaments, which actually could bring anywhere from 150, 200, 250 teams. Uh, those have really become big across the country, and, and we're in a great area for it. So we're adding 3v3. Um, you go down our list, and, and as far as just events, uh, we do all sorts of stuff as far as uh, Target Golf, which is an event we do here locally, but we have teen, uh, kids from all over Northeast Arkansas. Uh, rock Climbing Club. It's only rock wall in this area, so we actually, kids from all over this area come in for the Rock Climbing Club. Uh, NEA Volleyball, that is a, uh, a little program we do between school volleyball and J.O. volleyball that, that kind of gives kids that might be looking to play J.O. an opportunity to practice and get better, and that brings kids from all over Northeast Arkansas. So, you know, 28 events, This what this does for us, this mount will give us an opportunity to help scholarship kids in that are local kids that wouldn't have an opportunity to play. It allows us to keep the cost of our tournaments lower so that we can bring more teams in from out of town. If you can offer teams a lower entry fee, they're gonna come here and stay. 
if you have the higher entry fee, which if, if we don't get that, we do have to increase the entry fee at that point, you're less likely to get the team to come here. They'll go to a place that's closer that's, that's going to be a more cost effective. Okay, and I, I think it's important to note for um, we did receive complete financials and a very detailed list of the tournaments that y'all sponsored and all the Jonesboro events, which was very, very helpful with that. And it looked on the financials, it looked like, you know, after the expenses, it's pretty much a break even when you include our funds in, in the program. So uh, I would go ahead and recommend the same amount. Okay, 50,000 to. Uh, uh, okay. I can get those numbers. Miss Paul boosters. Okay. Let's go into the uh, Jonesboro baseball boosters uh, turf project and also that. And just if if y'all need to take a break, there's restrooms over here. Do you need to, Do you need to leave? Yeah, go ahead and tell us about your program. It's I'll let you hop up here. That you, you're doing the the weightlifting program. We funded five thousand last year. Um, this right here is uh, on my iPad. It's got KITV. They did a five minute clip last year. Uh, yeah. They had another one. Tell tell us about the the number of people that you've got coming in and number of overnight stays. You need to go behind my. Okay. You need to go to the microphone, please. Yeah, we we've got the packet and with a lot of the information in it. Tell us number of people coming in and, and how many overnight hey, stays. Last year I had 85 lifters, but they okay. usually bring three, four, and five people with them to uh, watch the event. This is a national championship. I have people come from New York, Maine, Dallas, Oklahoma, Illinois, Kentucky, Mississippi, Louisiana, and it's been you know building every year. And I've been getting like TV exposure, you know from. Right. Channel 8 and Channel 7 and the Jonesboro Sun after my contest, they had a front page thing about my contest, so everybody's getting to know us about it. Okay. And I traveled all over Arkansas and Missouri and all that, handing out applications. I talked to people about that. And then uh, they're having a deadlift for donuts for the police department here in town. And I don't just do this at my contest. You know, it talks about <clears throat> I travel to other organizations. Mm -hmm. I bring my equipment that I use to them, you know, because it's very expensive equipment to place, the kilo set, the benches, and the judges. I have to fly my world judges in because I set world records in my contest. And all this is supposed, like say on this, this clip you saw on the, my iPad, it goes worldwide. It's on my organization. It goes all like all over the world, countries and stuff. And, and people usually come to my contest if you ever want to come and watch. Some of the board members have in the past, but if you'll come and watch, a lot of people say mine's better than the world's, and they have five to 600 lifters. Okay, so how many again did we have this last year? Um, we had 85 contests. We had over 350 people come to watch it. It was at the trim gym in that 15,000 square foot room, and Mr. Uh, Scott Brown, you can talk to him. He enjoyed it, and he thought it was really well organized, and he was proud of it, and he said, I can use it anytime I want to. Okay. So having the space, and the world's, there's a, Venue's only like a 10,000 square foot room. Okay. Recommendation? Uh, 2,500. 25, okay. 2,500. Okay. Is everybody okay, okay with that? Would that help you, Mr. Morgan? Yes, sir. Every bit of health. Okay. We'll report back. I know you got to go, so appreciate it. Okay. We'll hop back up to. Uh, <laughs> Again, if y'all need to take a break, we do have restrooms over here and, and uh, trying to get through as, as speedy as we can. Okay. Randy, uh, just to summarize, we had a planning meeting in August. One of the things that um, was uh, some of the former commissioners were passionate about that thought would be a huge benefit for uh, Jonesboro for the growth of hotel rooms is turf at Joe Mac. Originally, when I got on here and started talking about it, you know, the request came to, it was brought up that, you know, A&P needs to fund 100% of it. And we just said, you know, that's not an option. We do feel like um, we lost some revenue, hotel revenue because of turf. Uh, we're competing with other places now like South Haven, Conway, uh, other places that we're losing tournaments to. So, there is a proposal that we are 
on the table for us to do turf. Is that correct? That's correct. And Jerry, I'll even say, um, even in the last few years, Oxford, Mississippi has, has jumped into the game real big with turf. And um, Hot Springs, um, who, who used to not be a, a big draw for baseball tournaments, has turf as well. So it's really, it's, it's really the direction it's going in, in youth sports. Um, we lose five to seven tournaments every year due to rain. Our, and we, we've done tons of work. And, and you, you folks that have been involved for a long time know that we've done major dirt projects. We've gone in, and it's just, just where we sit. It's um, where we, we don't we, we hold a lot of water. We don't we don't drain well, and we've gone back in and had them professionally redone. So turf is the next way to go for these infields and um, and, and Wixon's crew. So we're asking for we're we're asking um, for the commitment over five years of uh, five hundred thousand from A and P, and then uh, the city's going to the city's going to kick in. Um, uh, Another 500, and then we, then Jonesboro Baseball out of operations would would, would go for 100,000 for the for the million one, for the total project of the turf. We um, we also also we're asking for uh, 60 for for um, for advertising and operations as we put in our proposal too. Okay, I think you know in, labor, in, more more labor, and we're, we're putting in a new concession stand too. So we're going to have new concessions, more concession stand workers and. All that good stuff too. To, you know, to get in the numbers, I think originally the cost estimate was a million two fifty on the turf. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gotten that whittled down to a million one. We do. Um, and I think originally baseball was going to try to pitch in two fifty. You know, y'all are probably getting more benefit than anybody. Sure. I, I would just, I, I guess, my recommendation if we do it would be to cut our total commitment down on a pro rata share, which I'm looking at. It's like four hundred twenty five thousand. Over five years, which would be eighty-five thousand a year, we're basically on the turf. On the turf side, and kind of my math, eighty-five thousand a year over five years, and then if we did fifty thousand on just the annual spring tournaments, mm -hmm. and that's a total of about a hundred and thirty-five thousand for this next year, and. Last this last year we did 131.5. So my math, we're getting really close to use, doing the same amount. Right. What we're doing is basically using the same amount of money we gave them last year. And an extremely big benefit out of it. Right. It's it's a long term project that we've talked about. And it's not really we're not really increasing the amount of money we gave over last year. It's right. just we are making a commitment. I, I, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. So, but I think it's important to note too on the, on the. The 50000 a year, that's not a five-year commitment. We have to look at that every year, and hopefully as, again, getting self-sustaining, as you grow these tournaments, get these people in, you're going to make more ticket sales, and maybe that dollar amount might could slide down. Yeah, and, and absolutely. And we're not just looking at the just looking at the turf project was the only thing we were looking at for the five-year right. five commitment. I would completely understand on, on the other. So the recommendation is a, a five-year commitment on turf of 425 basically 85,000 a year and then for 2018 50,000 for basically operating expenses. Is that yeah, I agree with that. Is that I mean this is a big commitment we need to make sure we all understand and are in agreement because we're we're we stuck be, with it. We're going to be competitive. We we need to do yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely and I want to add one more thing in there too. We still we run a rec league that's over 800 kids as well and just just so everyone knows this directly benefits kids in Jonesboro too. I mean, not just not just people coming from out of town, but it is it's a dual effect. I know we get people staying in hotel rooms, but we also have a great benefit for our citizens as well. And also, again, we're making significant improvements to South Side through city funds allocated, and so we're doing both projects at the same time, and it should help tremendously. And, and uh, uh, we we did I did keep track of. Estimated number of hotel rooms, visitors, that sort of thing, and this ranks right number two behind ASU. So I think, um, anyway, that's my recommendation, and we'll go forward with that. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. The recommendation would be for a total estimated project cost on the turf of a million one, with uh, Jonesboro Baseball Boosters providing two hundred fifty thousand dollars over five years. Uh, Jonesboro A and P Commission providing 425,000 over five years, and the City of Jonesboro providing 425,000 over five years. And I think it's also we forgot to mention that it is our understanding that the city will be able to use their money on the front end to go ahead and fund the installation of this this winter, and we will pay back the city as we go, and so this will be ready to go 
in the spring, correct? Correct. That, that's, that's my understanding as well. Right, Royce? Yeah. And that obviously is also all contingent upon the budget of the city. So. And weather will be a factor. In, but, right. we, but, you know, it, it, we're at the point now, if weather's an issue in January or February, it's, we weren't going to play in March anyway. So we, we need to get it done as soon as we can. And then we will also, I guess, be able to start, we talked about this, getting, going ahead and booking tournaments now and let, as soon as we get it approved by the city, start marketing it so we can get the spring. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the time that we can pull the trigger and we can announce that that we are getting turf. And I'm telling you, that'll be a big boost right when we right when we say that. Okay. That's what teams are looking for when they book in advance. That'll be another finance committee approval, Joe. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Are there any other city items that we or that that we did not cover? Kind of, let me regroup here. I'm showing that we are at uh, Foundation of Arts. Does that sound correct? Yeah. Foundation of Arts. Come on. I mean, we, I think we we're all very familiar with Foundation of Arts. My understanding originally. Jonesboro A and P was set up years and years and years ago for to fund the Foundation of Arts, and it's expanded from there. Correct? Yes, sir. That's what I've been told. Okay. I would. I mean, can I say something? Jerry? Yes. Um, I, I, just to keep it easy, um, I would recommend keeping the funding the same as 2017 to 55,000. I agree with that. Okay. I mean, you don't have to talk unless you just want to, but. Okay. I <laughs> I mean, you did a great presentation at the city council meeting, you know, a couple of months ago or three months ago. And thank you. I mean, definitely has an impact on the city. So money well spent. Okay. okay. That was easy. Well, that was easy. But again, we've got to get all the way through the bottom. Of course. We, there's places, I don't know, we'll have to see. We just appreciate didn't. you all for what you're doing. Okay. Our decisions, I know. Okay. <laughs> uh, the next one I've got is Jonesboro Dare. Is anybody here from the Dare program? Okay. And just a history while he's coming up, we have funded DARE program in the past. This last year, we did not fund anything. Uh, it was actually approved, and then the bike ride or something, it uh, didn't didn't go through. Okay. The request this year is for uh, $50,000 for the smoke and spokes poker run. What? And I'm Officer Jamie Seaborn. Um, I did throw you all a little bit of budget stuff together, too, if you needed it. It's just mm -hmm. an estimate I'll give to you. Um, Years past, we did the um, the ride across the state, and uh, y'all have helped us out on that as far as prizes. And we we did it for five years. We did two rides and uh, raised a lot of money for Dare. And also, we had the downtown event, uh, the, the motorcycle event downtown. And last year, both of those have gone away. So what we're looking at doing is possible joining those together for a one-day event, something that's never been done before. Uh, and actually having motorcycles and bicycles. And the way we're projecting it doing that is putting the two dare vehicles, start having a downtown event and putting the two dare vehicles in the front, leading bicycles in one lane, motorcycles in the other. And they'll actually break off and the bicycles will do a 50 mile route, the motorcycles will do a 100 mile route. So they actually won't be together after, except for that beginning part. Um, but we've looked and done research and we haven't found anywhere that, where that's ever been done. So we're hoping to bring that to Jonesboro, um, I actually brought uh, a cycling magazine, an Arkansas cycling magazine uh, for y'all to look at. And the only place that Arkansas or that Jonesboro is mentioning it is Gearhead. Uh, it don't have any of our. There's no cycling events for Jonesboro at all. And we're looking at doing it just to raise money for Dare. So, so all the profits you know are going to be going into our Dare fund. Uh, I estimated we probably spend about thirty-three thousand as far as our Dare funds for the year. Uh, and that's taking care of probably 1,200 fifth graders is what we have this year. In your application packet, I believe it gave an estimated marketing cost of about $10,000. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I would recommend that we absorb that and leave it there for the time being. Yeah, I think, you know, hard for us to fund, you know, 100% of the other expenses associated with it. If we could get maybe some corporate sponsors to help out or... Yeah, because we know in years past, you know, they've... The, the motorcycle thing, they they've gave away a motorcycle 
you know, is trying to really bring people in. And then the, the bicycle ride, they would actually, the top two money raisers, they would give bicycles away. But, you know, since they've stopped all that program, we're pretty much starting over. Uh, so we're trying to find, you know, some event to bring people into Jonesboro that we can also, um, you know, something different that hopefully it'll grow like, you know, Little Rock has the big damn bridge ride that, you know, three or 4,000 people are going to now. And we're wanting something that'll actually be local, whereas our ride across the state was is really fun, but it wasn't bringing people here. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, ho hopefully we can make it safer to ride up here too, you know, right. through some of this, you know, we, we have a, meeting tomorrow with Wixon about the pedestrian, you know, in the bike plan. Um, so, I mean, that, that's an important when you're talking about having like big, big damn bridge. A lot of that ride is on the Arkansas river trail right. where there's no cars. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and I participated in the 24 hour dare ride before. So, you know, I, I, I've, I've been there, I've helped raise money for dare. Um, but I, I agree with Chris that, I mean, I think at this point, I think we just recommend, you know, I agree with your recommendation just doing the $10,000 for advertising and contingent upon the event actually happening. And, you know, help, you know, hope, hopefully I'll have good luck with sponsorships. Okay. Let's make a recommendation of 10,000. Yes. And contingent upon the event happening and, you know, us doing the advertising, if you can get some other sponsors and get it biffed up yeah, that way. We're projecting right now, we're predict projecting possibly June the 9th, that, that weekend, so right after World is, is what we're that's that's what we're projecting right now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The next one, um, St. Jude Stravaganza. Let me let me make a few comments um, as we get into this. TJ, <coughs> there we have about four organizations that we have funded in the past. Um, and there's been a lot of discussion over the last couple of years. There was a lot of discussion in last year's meeting uh, of trying to get some of these organizations self-sustaining because uh, there's there's four of them that I, and, and we've kind of visited back and forth. Uh, these organ, there's four of them, I would say, St. Jude or St. Jude Stravaganza, Rotary Club Sports Show, St. Bernard's Medical Group, and the NEA Duck Classic. And what I think I'm going to try to do, they're, they're, they're mature, they're all very profitable, they all serve a huge benefit to the community, they're all well established. I mean, there's four of those, you could probably call them the, the Bill Hurt Group. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but I think it's, you know, just kidding, Bill. Um, you know, I, I've visited with the various reps of the different groups, and, you know, there's two sides to the argument here that, you know, they're making a lot of money. Why should we continue to fund those? And talking to the groups, I understand also that if we didn't fund them, they're going to cut their advertising and outside advertising because it's something that they're not going to have in the budget to do that. And I'm kind of talking to all of them instead of just... TJ, and, and I think we've seen some cuts last year, and it probably was affected in some of the organizations, some of the, um, like the sports show was down a little bit, and some of the or other organizations were down a bit. I think it, it's, it's only fair for us to kind of look at those as all one group, try to figure out um, a fair way to handle that and, and make a recommendation across the board that's even for all four of those groups. Um, does that... That's very Does that good make idea. sense? Yeah. Um, and again, as we mentioned, a lot of this, you know, our goal is to make some of these self-sustaining. Um, I would, you know, I would say this is kind of the first year that we're going to do it this way, but I mean, my recommendation just to start with for those four would be looking at $10,000 a piece, but we also kind of make it contingent upon you know, using that money for outside Jonesboro advertising, different advertising and trying to bring in different people instead of the same people that are coming in year after year. And again, I think it's something that we're going to have to look at trying to sunset some of these. It was discussed by the previous commissioners and um, I think it's something that is, is a very valid point. Um, I guess that 
that's my recommendation across the board. I think everybody is familiar with those four organizations. I don't know if there needs to be any questions of any of those or, or thoughts or. I think it makes sense. Is there any, any of those organizations that want to get up and, and I guess I want to make sure we give you all due recognition and due time to discuss this because you know, y'all bring in a lot of people and y'all are very, very valuable to Jonesboro. We know that. Um, I guess since I'm here, I can maybe go first. <laughs> or, um, and y'all did not receive any funding last no, year, is that correct? No, right. We, we received zero dollars last year. And I mean, there, honestly, there was a lot that changed with our event last year. New venue, um, it was at Ridge Point instead of at the, the former fairgrounds. You know, there were a lot of questions that happened late in the game. Um, we had another place lined up and we lost it. So, I mean, there are a lot of variables in our attendance last year, but it's also undeniable that we didn't have any AMP dollars and therefore basically we didn't advertise. We had some in-kind stuff, um, but other than that, you know, we didn't, we didn't spend event dollars on advertising. Um, there's no way to know what percentage of our dip was due to that and due to the other factors. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's reasonable to say that, that part of it probably was due to lack of promotion um, from our, our perspective, I mean, thank you so much for the $10,000 recommendation. Um, you know, that's something that, that we can start working on now. In years past, we've also received funding very, very late and really had to scramble to come up with, with ways to promote and spend. Um, you know, assuming that this passes through the end of the day and tomorrow, um, you know, that, that gives us something that we can go to work on immediately and work on those outside of Jonesboro people to hopefully you know, fuel some support. You've got a great new venue for this, this year. Yes, yeah, we'll be in the, the former Sears building at the corner of Highland and Caraway. So there will be no no venue excuse this year at all. And Ridge Point was a great venue. They were great to work with. Um, it, it was just kind of out of the way and a lot of question on how we were gonna pull it off. Um, ended up having plenty of space. But. Let me uh, go ahead and uh, thank you, TG. We appreciate that. Let me let's go ahead and hit all four of those. Rotary Club. Um, are there any questions of the Rotary Club or any any thoughts along those lines? Um, just, last year, y'all received. I would 5, just 000. echo uh, what TJ said. Last year, we received about thirty thousand less than what we had received in the past, um, and our numbers were down about thirty thousand. So um, one thing that we are working on, and I, this would be the first year that we've done this, uh, at one point there used to be a sanctioned turkey calling contest in Jonesboro, and it was huge. Uh, National Wild Turkey Federation san san sanctioned uh, event. We've got the green light for that this year. Uh, the selling point on it would be that it's the last event before what everybody calls the big dance in Nashville the week after the sports show. Um, that's one thing that we're working on to promote this outside of Arkansas, Northeast Arkansas. Um, and I, the only other thing I would add in there, and I, I know you guys know this, all of our sports show dollars get put back pretty much right into the city. Fort Rotary, Rotary Centennial Park. Um, so it's kind of a uh, two bangs for the buck, but um, no, I would just echo what TJ said, and you know we would be grateful for ten thousand. Advertising is expensive. Um, I think that the more you advertise, the bigger your event will be. Um, but I would just kind of echo what he said, and and we would be appreciative of anything that we were allocated. Thank you. And again, our struggle is we have new events coming on, bringing a lot of people, and so it's a balance. It's it's the hardest thing that we have to face up here. And I will echo, you know, if as part of this, if we try to sunset these or whatever funding, if we can grow the event and add another day or another event to go along with it, you know, uh, like uh, the, the Duck Classic, we talked about, you know, maybe adding a turkey or a, a duck calling event another day or, you know, those are things that we can look at uh, as, as growing. Um, St. Bernard's, is there any questions there? kind of like those folks, um, we, all the money we raise is to put on the event, it's free. We, the event doesn't gener generate any revenue. It's tons and tons of screenings. 
you know, the thing that we can grow, we're kind of tapped out on everything we do in the event for the weekend, but the thing that we continue to grow is the race. And that's what draws folks from 11 different states. And the race is certified. It raised money for a NICU right here in Northeast Arkansas, which folks are passionate about or family members from other places come to. You know, one thing we're doing th different this year that you guys have asked as far as advertising is it is going to be advertised in regional races outside of the state. So starting this December at the St. Jude race, um, and that will bring people in for overnight stays too. It does, yeah. We do have people that come in overnight. Our packet pickup is on Friday night and just people that are committed to racing, if they're gonna run a half marathon, they don't really wanna get up and come in the morning. And they come from, we have folks from Virginia, from Illinois, from North Carolina that have come to run this race. And so they do come and spend the night. Um, and, and also the vendors, like the event has continued to grow. We had 26 vendor booths this year and we had folks from Hot Springs, from Atlanta, from a lot of different places that are coming and that are staying. I mean, we had one fun story, someone said, oh, you know, I came back to town just so I could go to, we stayed over, you know, just so we could go to that Shadrachs that's right there on um, Red Wolf Boulevard. So people do come from out of town and stay for the event. Now, the good thing about our event is that we're serving folks here in Northeast Arkansas with screenings from head to toe and education pieces and the student athlete physicals, all of that's done for free. Um, so yes, I say what these guys say, we appreciate every cent that you give us. Um, advertising is expensive and the more you advertise, we feel like the more awareness there is and there is for the event to remind folks to come. So we will take whatever you give us. That, that, that the 10,000 is not, that's not our, we didn't even ask for our full advertising budget because right. we know there's a lot of worthy events, but um, yeah, we're grateful and we will spend it exactly. Okay, and I think we all realize that, that a lot of those screens fits under our quality of life uh, program as part of the A&P. So thank you very thank much. Thank you, thanks guys. Uh, Kim, Duck Classic, any questions there? Or the only thing that uh, that I would like to to just bring up again is that, uh, uh, as we spoke about earlier, the amount of money it takes to advertise in some of these national publications is, is astronomical, and so we are not able to do that because our um, the people who support the event are giving to a charity. So we are very, we have to be extremely careful. The $10,000 is gonna be great. Every bit of that will be utilized um, for, for advertising outside of Jones World to draw people in. And a lot of it will be utilized on a national level or at least the state level, like with the Greenhead Magazine and things of that nature. Um, as far as the continuing years, one thing I really wish the commission would consider um, in here, there was some information about ac economic data, and I got with the chamber and I tried to come up with some figures, and honestly, I didn't really know. But I've continued to look because it really intrigued me, and I came across an article that was dated in 2005, so it's way outdated, but it was a DU article talking about Stuttgart. And they estimated that they would bring in, over the 60 days of duck season, a million dollars a day into their local economy. So what I would hope that y'all would consider is that with Duck Classic, we're already here, we're established, we're getting national attention with it. Utilize that. Um, you know, maybe you consider, and, and I don't know exactly how we want to partner with it or if there are other things that can be done, but in the past, that you know, in the future years, that might be something that you want to look at if you can't continue to fund these, you know, like our event after so many years if we, you know, tap out or whatever, um, just maybe think about that. I just hate to see our community lose when we have that natural resource right Right. I mean, I think that's a great point. We've talked about that. I think it's important. We just need groups to put it together and present it to us, and we'll help fund it. You know, I mean, we uh, and that's what we're talking about, taking these dollars we spent before on new new organizations and new projects. We just, we, we I think every one of y'all are volunteered significantly already. I, I see the same people, so I mean, we just need more life and more volunteers to help out, so. Stuttgart's where the ducks are. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a lot here, too. I <laughs> so I, I think those four, 10,000 apiece, thank you, Kim. Um, again, we're just trying to be as fair as we can across the board, and I think that's uh, accomplishing that object. Any questions on, on that? Okay, any questions there? Okay. Treble Clef, uh, we can make this easy. They requested 2,500. They received 2,500 before. I would recommend 2,500. I agree. Okay. 
Uh, next one, United Way. Um, they actually had, gave a presentation at the last meeting, received, now this is for a softball tournament that they host, United Way hosts, uh, and the money, you know, it's a tournament that is here. Uh, they requested 1500 I would recommend 1500 for right now. Yeah, I drove through the parking lot last year when that tournament was going on and it was full, so yeah, good event. Uh, Jonesboro Bowling, Hajinx, uh, last year we gave them $20,000. This year they're requesting 30. I went out to the event, it, it was impressive. They bring a lot of people in town. Um, I mean, it's, it's a professional, professionally ran deal. It brings a lot of people in. We've got a list of everybody that showed up, the number of nights. Uh, it, it, talking to other hoteliers, it fills up the hotels. It, it, it does what we're looking for. for. I would, I, I would, I would make a recommendation of twenty thousand. They requested thirty. I'd make a recommendation of twenty. Yeah. Everybody okay with that? Um, yes. Lions Club uh, received 7,500 last year, requesting 15,000 this year. Any recommendation there? Does anybody want to speak about it? Anybody here that wants to speak on that behalf of that? Okay. Sorry, I, I want to make sure we give you. I'm Ron McCormick, the uh, Secretary of the University Heights Lions Club. Yeah. I have Dr. Tom Woods, who is president of the Lions Club. If you have to answer any questions you might have. Okay. How many uh, people do you all have come through the doors, and how many do you think? Uh, I'm showing in the report you had about 2,000 visitors from northeast Arkansas. Uh, we anticipate about 2,300. Okay. Now, I need to explain that our paid admission is around 1,100. Mm -hmm. But we have 2,300 coming through because we admit 12 and under. We make it a family event. And we let any 12-year-old that's not wearing a wedding ring in, so. Okay. And then hotel rooms, it shows an estimate of 86. Does that? Yes, sir. Uh, there's a, in your packet, we have <coughs> the codes from where our, uh, uh, vent, uh, our exhibitors come from. I assumed the distance away that about 30% of those would spend at least two nights. Okay. I would, uh, you know, 7,500 7, last year. I recommend that. Okay. Make a recommendation of 7,500 there. Are, are you okay with that? I mean, uh, yes, sir. Uh, okay. We definitely appreciate that. Okay. We're going to pencil that in for right now till we get further down the list. Okay. Um, Downtown Association uh, received 45,000 last year. The request is 45,000 this year. Uh, any questions on on that one? Yeah, um, I would make a recommendation of keeping in that, keeping it at that. We we do have all their financials and all the report of everything they're doing there. Any questions? Okay. I hope we don't end up at. Two million dollars at the end. Um, oh, it, it's easy to change. Okay. Um, Carly's Ridge Car Club uh, received five thousand last year, requesting five thousand this year. Mr. Allison, do you have any? How many people show up for that event? Kind of like it's hard to say, you know, because you have everybody coming, people coming in from Tennessee, uh, Missouri, uh, you know, Illinois to come to the show, and even even Mississippi in that area, and the people come out of Little Rock. Uh, as far as like say registered cars last year, we had a we had about over a hundred about 105, 110 cars last year, not counting the club cars and then other people that just came and didn't even show the cars. We have a big swap meet too. Have people come in from all over to do the swap meet and. We just, uh, you know, we we use every bit of what y'all give us to promote this this show, and and it's free to the public, and that's what what we really go for anyway. And it all goes to help children's charities. Five thousand is our recommendation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then we've already done DISC aside. NEA Baptist Hispanic Community Services um, gave them seventy five hundred last year. Request is ten thousand two fifty this year. Is anybody from Hispanic Services here? Okay.
Yes, sir. Go ahead. Tell us about you. I'm with the Hispanic Center. Yeah. Tell us about, I guess, the, the money that you're requesting, what it's going to be used towards. Uh, this year, we're uh, requesting $10,000. That's purely for advertising. We're uh, printing shirts. Uh, we'll have some mail out, um, postage, and uh, we are. We have our yearly newsletter. There's La Ventana, where we post all our events. We have to. Fo I mean, the the most important thing that we have here, and uh, our main concern is that we cannot uh, present an application for for one event since. Where uh, we bring more people in is with our services throughout the year, uh, with the uh, Mexican consulate where we have uh, people drawn from uh, Oklahoma, Tennessee, and, and different states just to uh, receive services from the consulate. Our events are mainly for outreach. Um, we still bring some teams in uh, for the soccer tournament, and we have people for our Day of the Dead uh, that is coming now in November. So this is closer to rear round funding and um, quality of life funding, and that, that is some of our qualifications, or fits some of our qualifications, um, I guess. I would recommend the same 7,500 that we did last year. Okay. 7,500, any questions there? I'm good with that. Okay. Is it, will that help you? Okay. Okay. We'll go with that. Thank you very much. Um, Crickhead County Martin Luther King Committee. Received 3,500 last year. The request is 10,000. Anybody here want to speak on behalf of that organization? I would make a recommendation of 3,500 again on that one. I'll echo that. Okay. Uh, Delta Symphony. Anybody here? Okay, come on up. Yeah, come on up. While they're coming up, uh, the request is for 20,000. Last year we gave them 4,500. And it, it looks like from looking at the um, visitors, roughly 3,000 throughout the year. Is that right? Hi. <laughs> yes. yes. What, what, what is your name again? Barbara Jimenez. Okay. The executive director in my cohort. One okay. of my board members, Jessica. Okay. Lost her. I'm sorry. What was the question? Uh, the number of visitors that come in, I know it's more of... It's not just a single event. Right, it's not a single event. We're going, and we're on a calendar year as well. So uh, we have increased our numbers, especially for our young artist uh, contest and the concert, which brings people from as far as New York and California. So the overnight stays, the restaurants and the shopping, because they're waiting around during the day for the events. And we're increasing in concerts, and we're hoping that we can expand the funds. That's why we're asking more for advertising even Coca-Cola advertises, but we want to raise our visibility in the community. We want to be able to advertise out of state to bring more people into this 28th annual contest because it grows bigger, bigger every year, mainly. I guess ask for recommendation um, from the floor on that. I'd like to recommend 10,000. Um, they got 4,500 last year, but I think 10,000 would be a nice increase. Okay. Any questions or other thoughts there? Okay. Any anything else? Any other questions from us or anything? We just we believe that the advertising is going to raise our numbers, and we really believe as part of the culture in Jonesboro that we can be a greater economic ambassador for the city okay. when we reach those numbers. Okay. Think so. Okay. Thank you. We're going to recommend 10,000 right now until we get through to the bottom and see where we're at. Thank you. We appreciate it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Jonesboro Barbecue Fest, um, just a little history on that. Um, this is actually a advertising and promotions sponsored event. Um, it started a couple of years ago with the concert with, I guess it was the sesquicentennial event. We have, con we have continued funding this over the last couple of years as a concert. Tim wasn't, wasn't able to be here today, so he sent me a um, summary of that that's in the packet. Um, we, you know, the money goes towards the barbecue fest, but the majority of it goes towards the free concert on the Saturday night of the barbecue fest. 
Uh, it's a great event. I've been there the last couple of years. It brings in a lot of people. Um, I've, I've, I've made this known in the other meetings. My biggest concern with it is it's a lot of money, $100,000 for a one-night event that really is hard to justify having hotel room stays. You know, I, I said it at the last meeting when, when it was brought up. Actually, last year it got tabled and almost didn't get funded, funding. It ended up getting funding after uh, some other money was released. Um, and, and I've talked to Tim over the last couple of months about the justification of it. And what has kind of evolved since then is uh, Tim has talked to, and I've also talked to a uh, major corporate sponsor here in town that has an idea, that had an idea a year or two ago of doing a weekend long music and arts festival. And they did not pursue it because one of the, one was the, the dollar amount of funds needed and also just the logistics, and they just kind of tabled it. So we had gotten together, Tim, myself, and that corporate sponsor. They're working on the logistics. They're working on um, trying to see if we can make this into a two- or three-day music and arts festival in downtown and make it also coordinate with the barbecue fest. Uh, my recommendation is to pencil this in for $100,000, but table it uh, till the spring, until they can make a formal presentation, until they can get everything together to see if they can pull this off as a two to three day festival. Uh, in the event that they're not able to, then I mean, I personally would have to recommend in that we cut the funding some on that, not necessarily all of it, but if it's a one day event, I just think we would have to cut the funding in my personal opinion. So my, my recommendation is to table it, but count in the $100,000 right now uh, with the hopes of it turning into a multi-day event for a music and arts festival that would bring people in for overnight stays. That's a great idea. Uh, does that make sense? I think that would be the best evolution of this event for us and, and everybody involved. Yeah. Um, the, uh, okay, the, so that's, the, the next one is City Youth Services. This is one that we received, that y'all received yesterday. Uh, they did submit it in time. It went to a Gmail account that we did not uh, see until yesterday. It was in today's packet that you received. Their request is for $6,000. Uh, I don't think we funded it last year. Is there anybody from City Youth here? Yeah, come on up. We, we will need to get you to go ahead and please um, Go ahead and give us a presentation to summarize the event because I don't think many of us have had a chance to review the whole packet. Thank you for your flexibility with that. Um, you know, I am now serving in a new capacity at City Youth, but I'm also a certified teacher and I taught in the Jonesboro and Brooklyn schools for close to 19 years. Um, and I knew when I came into this position that there was a huge need for literacy awareness among our families, um, within our lower income children, but also um, a need to raise awareness for dyslexia interventions and the, the tendencies and the traits that a dyslexic child will many times um, you know, display in a classroom or in a home. Um, since coming to City Youth, many, many parents, grandparents even, that are raising children are coming to us and asking us specifically to uh, provide intensive and, and rigorous in, uh, literacy interventions. We are providing screeners. We are providing DRA, DSA, different data-driven um, screeners to identify the most needy of children within our building. So we're, we're, we're focusing on those needs for our children. But along with that, April is uh, the month for a literacy awareness. And with the requests coming from parents and the need that I saw in the public schools and that I see in our building as well, um, we want to provide a community awareness opportunity opportunity for parents, fellow educators, grandparents, family members of uh, children and even adults that are dealing with the need to learn about ways they can increase literacy engagement pieces and identify the different types of uh, literacy um, concerns that, that they're seeing within their child. Jonesboro is very blessed 
to have two nationally known authors in our community through Mary Margaret Schultens and Cherry Frierson. They wrote an acclaimed uh, curriculum that was just uh, awarded and honored by our governor, as well as some education uh, some education officials from Washington. Mary Margaret also, who is the author of the curriculum, was just honored as the uh, state's, uh, as the teacher of the year for literacy um, opportunities. Um, I want to sponsor at City Youth Ministries um, a, a day, an evening, a presentation where families can come and hear Mary Margaret speak to share what she knows and can and can help you know identify and lead parents and children to a better understanding of why there is a literacy um, lack of engagement. And also, I am going to use that time to provide the parents and grandparents and out-of-town people, you know, an opportunity to know what we're doing at City Youth to address those needs um, within our community and our Northeast Arkansas area. Okay, so the request is for 6000 Tell us exactly where that money is going to be used. Well, in the budget, you can see that mainly, you know, the basic umbrella of that 6000 is to market. The, um, that one day event. Okay. That event. Um, you know, we've got a couple of, uh, you know, chamber blasts. And you know what? I need to go back just a little bit. Along with that initial opportunity for parents to come in later in that month of that April uh, literacy month, we're going to partner with. Um, uh, different bookstores and businesses here in town, uh, kind of piggybacking off we did, what, something we did last uh, Christmas, Lifeway was kind enough to order specific books on an appropriate reading level and offer it to um, members of our community to come in and buy at a 20% discount. It was an amazing, wonderful outpouring of, uh, you know, of generosity towards City Youth, but it also really enhanced the business. So along with this one night of, of educating the community, we're also then going to piggyback off that and offer an opportunity for different businesses in town to set aside books that are, you know, aligned for that child and offer a 20% discount or some sort of a discount to members of our community that want to go purchase those books and donate them to the families, um, again, at their um, appropriate reading level. And so as you can see, that's a lot of stuff to let the community know about, and we're going to need to market it well. So the majority of our um, expenditures and requests are for those types of things. You can see that there. Um, you know, um, I'm really excited about the opportunity of that take-home literacy bag. We have um, allotted um, approximately $25 for a literacy bag that, um, you know, it will be something that is on a grade level. It is something that would provide an engagement piece for the child. And then also different engagement pieces for the families that maybe not, don't necessarily have something on level that they can sit down and share with their child. So it would be a takeaway um, also, you know, for that first function where they are, um, you know, educated. And if I could also add, you know, as you look at social media, not just in Jonesboro, but in Northeast Arkansas and across our state, you can find many, many families that are struggling with understanding why their child isn't reading well. Arkansas, um, a, a stat that we need to be aware of is that 69% of the people in the state of Arkansas are reading below level. And uh, that's something that um, we want to address and we want to help, you know, within our community so that we can create better workforce, better citizens, and better patrons. And, um, you know, so anyway, yeah, we, uh, we want to provide great marketing. We want the community to be aware of it. And I know that there will be people that come from out of our area that will come and eat dinner. They will buy, they will go to bookstores, they will buy different um, things, even from the Apple Group. And um, I feel like uh, we will have a lot of interest from the Conway community, from different areas in uh, Benton, and uh, just you know, even coming out of the Northeast Arkansas area that would come to hear um, our speakers. Okay, this will fall basically under quality of life. I think majority, majority of it would. Um, I guess I'll just make a recommendation from the floor. Um, 
I mean, six thousand dollars. I would be willing to absorb their marketing budget, which was around four thousand dollars. So four thousand. Four thousand. Um, make a recommendation of four thousand. Any questions on that? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Any Thank you. Questions. Um, okay. Um, yeah, how we do. Hmm. Yeah, how we do. Uh, how we're doing? No, well, hang on, just a second. before we do that, I, I do want to make sure. Uh, we, we rushed through a lot of these. I understand it, it was imperative we do that, so we tried to make it fair for many. Is there anybody here that feels like we did not give them enough time or would like to say anything else about the organization? I, I just want to make sure we feel like everybody had a fair shake at um, a presentation can, today. Can, can I ask, can we go back to Arkansas Hoops for, for a second? Yeah. yeah. I know we tabled it until we got to the bottom. We don't know where we are yet, but... If Mr. Mason, I just had a couple questions for him. We probably need to go ahead and make a recommendation on yeah, this that's, before that's what, we. That's kind of what I was getting at. Um, One thing about that too, it's different from the twelve thousand dollars that you guys gave us. This is actually a complete program, but as we were trying to, I thought the meeting was going to be more like the last time where you just kind of got unlimited time to talk about it. So I didn't put it in the program, but this is more of a year round. We do basketball camps, combines, we do high school events and all of that falls under um, this one event. So all the right. $12,000 that was given was just for a high school event. Right. This is so completely different. You know, when you're up here before, you said the 130,000 was for a three-year commitment. For three years, Maybe yeah. Step down, but in looking at your the budget where you were spending the hundred thirty thousand, the advertising part was about fifty-eight thousand, and the promotion part was seventy-two thousand. So on the advertising, the fifty-eight. I mean, are you thinking that's going to be about nineteen thousand dollars a year, like twenty thousand, and then a little less per year? So it won't be the complete fifty-eight, but it'll be more than a third because. Uh, at the beginning, we'll have to advertise more, and then our goal is year two, year three, year four to still do the same advertisement. But what happens is um, businesses and people will start trying to partner with you instead of charge you. Um, and we've had that happen in, in other areas before to where like radio groups are like, especially with Malik and being in town, they're like, okay, well, if he can do X number of appearances or X number of ads, then we'll give you that stuff for right. free or we'll partner with you on those things. Because the way I'm looking at this, I would be more willing for the A&P Commission to pay to help contribute to the advertising. I mean, looking at the promotion, it's, you know, T-shirts for the participants, you know, the event rentals, event staff, you know, stuff for them I'd be willing to spend some money to help get people here so having said that I mean as a place to start I mean I would recommend you know if, if you need to spend more the first year maybe and this may be high we may have to go back and adjust this but say 25,000 for the first year knowing that we may have to you know go back and adjust it and also obviously that'd be contingent upon the event happening or the events happening and um, the money designated towards the money designated, you know, for advertising. And what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I think we can make it work. I mean, that's just my record. That's just let's plug that's, it in and see if that's it, a starting point. See if it flies. It could go up or down from there. So we got a recommendation of twenty-five thousand to for uh, advertising for year one. Okay. Y'all, I mean, y'all gave that as a starting point. Yeah. Quick question on that: for the sixty-day follow-up, um, are you doing the twenty-five thousand for just the one event? So we'll do sixty days after that, or after the year? I think we'll give you yeah, the sixty-day follow-up on the entire year of events, because like the other events, we're doing them anyway. I thought the packet was requesting money for a single weekend event. Yes, it is. The, and that's yeah. 25000 would go towards that. That would go towards that. And then the funds, also in, in the packet, it says the funds and the proceeds are also going towards other events in the Jonesboro area. So that's why I didn't know if you want, if the 60-day follow-up was at the end of the year or after the one single event. Um, probably the, the single, single event. event. Yeah. And, and I think it's important for to, to note, you know, we're going to provide the, the advertising for that event, so you're going to get some major sponsors to 
do the other part, you know, the facility rentals and everything else, and and with the goal of targeting the same number of people that you've got in the application, you know, if it looks like you're not going to get to that number, then we could need to come back in and downsize the advertising. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions on that? Okay. I think that's all the questions we have there. So. I know the last time that I got up and spoke about the tournament that's going to take place in in uh, December, it was a separate um, budget item in a year cycle uh, event that um, that was taking place, and I got up and said something, but I wasn't a representative, and I think we spoke about that. Um, so I, I want to make sure that's clear uh, with him, and he can speak on his behalf of that because sure. that wasn't my duty. I just wanted to make sure that it was there with, when, when United Way, you know, they when they came together on that submit on that right at the end of the year event right. so he can he can speak for himself right okay yeah it's, it's a similar event that you guys funded the previous year it's at uh Jonesboro high school year three um of the event funded one year uh and not the other ones we'll be bringing in out of town teams some of the top high school teams to compete at jhs the weekend after um the hurricane classic so teams are teams will be staying in hotel rooms uh of course, people we'd be visiting from out of town. We have five out of town teams, no, six out of town teams, and then four other local teams. Okay, I guess you're going to clarify. I'm getting confused here. This is an event that okay. we requested 12,000 for before that's happening in December, but we didn't approve that for funding yet, correct? Correct. We tabled it. Was, it. Yes, Our, it was tabled. You're saying, is any of this 25,000 going to be going towards that event? No, because this is for 2017, and that one was for 2018. But we're doing that event in 2018 as part of the program. Okay. Okay. Is it? Uh, so, so I, I don't. So, okay, I'll clear it up. This one is for 2017. Which which one is what we're talking about right now? That got tabled. That got tabled the first time around earlier a couple months ago. Twelve thousand dollars. Yes, for the event in 2018. We will be doing all these events, but we just requested the 25000 or we just requested the money for the one AAU event. In the packet, we said the funds that we're getting for, those, for, for that event will be put back into the city to fund the other events like this one that we've done. You've got a December venue, and you got a... Uh May. Eight May. Yes. And we're not committed any for anything on the December venue, is that correct? Correct, no. Right. The $12,000 did not get funded, and right. so the money you're requesting today, 25000 is for next year's. This year's. This year's. This year's. This December. No, this no, no. No? No, okay, so, sorry. The $25,000 let's, is let's, for. Let's start over. The $12,000. 12000 is for. 12000 is for December, 2000. It got tabled, and we're not funding any of that. And it got tabled, yes. So is that tournament happening? Yes. It is happening? Yes. Okay. Right. Right. So the twelve thousand was from a previous pack. Right. And so we're not committed to fund that. We're not funding that at this time. The twenty five thousand is for your two thousand eighteen event. Two thousand eighteen, correct. So it's an additional. Right. So okay. Sorry about that. I just um okay, is everybody clear there? So we plugged in twenty five thousand for his two thousand eighteen event to be designated towards marketing. Okay. I want to be clear. Are you asking if we're going to give anything towards the twelve thousand for the December event? The December yes. Event. Yes. I don't think we don't have the funds available to do that. Okay. We're just putting this on on our budget to see if we can do this, right? Right. Yeah. yeah but he was still he he moved you moved from the next two thousand eighteen back to the table event in two thousand seventeen, mm -hmm. and he was just following up on that. Two different, two different things, and we don't have the money available for the. 12,000 that was tabled before right. for the 2017 events. Right. So on the 2018, when will we know, uh, I wasn't clear on that part, when will we know if you guys are funding the advertising budget? We're going to vote on not. that here in just a minute. Okay, okay. Okay, before we get into the total, uh, is there anybody else that has any anything else they want to say or any other present? Yes, sir? James, correct? Yes. Okay night with Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, we noticed that some of these were getting commitments for multi-years. We have a 
an agreement with ASU Convocation Center for six years. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything that you could put in the notes here about continuing this, it would really help us with our headquarters offices. I'd really like to see a commitment for a long term. I, I would, uh, because it is a small dollar amount com all compared, I would say that we could make it a three-year commitment of 10000 a year contingent upon it falling and performing up to the expectations that are outlined in the request. That would be very helpful. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And we'll be glad to, I mean, we, any of these groups will be glad to write letters on behalf of Jonesboro, welcome them get the mayor to do so also, I'd be, be glad to help with that. So is there anybody else that has any questions or any thoughts before we get into the um, totals? And again, we're gonna have to go through and possibly make some additional cuts there. So um, Joe, do you wanna, no other discussions? We, we don't at this time, we have, um, Honestly, just the last 30 to 45 days have spent a significant amount of time, uh, you know, working on the local organizations and the local funding, and um, we have not received any, uh, any any request for proposals from either group. Okay. Uh, so, right now we're at $736,500. I know we set 700 as a, as a, as a, you know, ballpark figure, or not much over that. I think we could go ahead and allocate that additional funding if the mayor agrees. I think we we could also. Uh, we started at 700. Um, we do have the two new hotels coming on board, and we do have probably about 50,000 more cash carrying over than we typically would from year over year. We've got two estimated 300 instead of 250, and I would uh, I would be okay with that if the other committee members were. I'm good with it. So right now, do, do we need to make have, a, have one motion where we- Make a motion to approve as, as discussed. I just, uh, before we get into that, I, I just, I think we, can, we will go through in, in the minutes and the tape and, and make sure we, where there's designations on where the money is supposed to go or allocated towards marking that sort of thing I think, or quality of life, I think it's important to note that we'll be requesting the follow-up packets and expecting them to be spent as as allocated, so. Hey, uh, one other thing, I know Chris has a motion on the floor, but you know, when we were talking about the ASU, you know, the six games a year, you know, we have to make sure that we're reasonable enough to know that if a game, something happens like the Miami game, so yeah, that's I mean, not a, something they're penalized for. Sense, yeah, so just wanted to have that in the record. So there, I'll, I'll second Chris's motion to um, approve these funding as recommended. Okay. We've got a motion and a second to approve all these items that have been requested funding for the total of, uh, what, can you scroll that down? $736,500. Any, any more discussion? Any other discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Uh, motion carries. Okay. Thank y'all very, very much. Thank, thank y'all. Um, I, I just want to tell you, we, we, the committee as a whole spent a lot of time trying to streamline this process. And again, the ultimate goal is fairness and achieve an increase in hotels and restaurants and shopping. So, uh, and quality of life. And if, if any of y'all have any suggestions, again, we're just volunteers here. Uh, we'll take constructive criticism. Y'all are welcome to give us any suggestions that you have. Um, it's an evolving process. Uh, Commissioner or Chairman, does this mean we don't have to meet tomorrow? Uh, we, we will not meet tomorrow. We had that as a contingency date if we needed to, but we will not. Uh, and again, any of the events that y'all need help with from us, we'll be glad to try to provide anything we can even in addition to the funds also. So is there any other new business out there? Okay. Uh, if there's no new business, I'll need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you all very much.